Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and we are going to write a program to detect human emotions using Keras tattoo in real time. So we are going to feed live feed from our webcam and then our model is gonna predict what is the emotion on the person's face and all the code that is used in this program will be available on GitHub. So I will give the GitHub link in the description. So do check that out. And now let's head towards Kaggle to download our dataset. Okay guys, so you have to go to this Kaggle's page of facial expression recognition challenge and here you will get all the data. So you should download this file and since I have already downloaded it, so I'm not gonna download it again. I'll show you guys. Oh, where's the file? So this is the zip file and when we unzip, we get this CSV and some other files as well we are not concerned about these files only this csv file so either you can open this file and inspect or else we will inspect this file via pandas in data frame um, let's read something about this data frame so in this data there are 4 by 4 pixels grayscale images of the face and what they have done is they the faces have been automatically registered so that face is more or less centered so they have already cleaned this data and basically cropped the face part of the image and they have labeled all of them into seven categories angry disgust fear happy sad surprise and neutral so they say the csv contains two column emotion and pixels so emotion column contains a numeric code ranging from zero to six so one of the column will be our emotion and that will be something like 0, 1, 2, up till 6. So it will depict one of these categories, angry, disgust, fear. And then there will, will be another column, pixels, and that will contain a string surrounded in quotes for each image. So there will be a string of pixels, 48 by 48 pixels, and that will contain the representation of that image. Okay. Okay, so let's examine this data set via our pandas data frame. And before that, I want to tell you all guys about the dependencies that you need to install. So first is NumPy, then pandas, TensorFlow and Keras. So these are the dependencies that we will need for now. I think after that, you also might need to install OpenCV. Um, I'll talk about it later on, but yes, you should install open cv as well because we are going to do it real time so you will need open cv to take input from our webcam in real time okay so let's go ahead and import our system libraries which we will require um, okay. import NumPy, sorry, NumPy, let's save this file. So, what we are gonna do is save it in our YouTube folder. I'm gonna name it Emotion, emotion Detection. Okay, and now from Keras, there will be a lot of modules import sequential and then from keras dot layers import dense dropout activation and flatten and from Keras dot layers import on 2D sorry on 2D um, max pooling 2D batch normalization um, I'm not sure I'm gonna use this for now but just gonna write it average pooling 2d um max pooling is fine we don't need this 
Fall. From we need what do we need? Uh, okay, from there are stop losses. Import categorical cross and copy. And from keras dot optimizers import atom from keras dot regularizers import l two and from keras dot utils import and p utils and then let's now read our csv file using pandas read csv module and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna print df dot info Okay, so let's run the program now. Emotion detection dot py. And let us see what's there in our data frame. So import name sequential. Okay, maybe I have done a blunder, guys. Let me just check. Okay, I think this s is capital. Check now. Hmm. It's taking some time. PD is not defined. So, okay. I think I have forgotten to import pandas. Yes. Um, did I tell in dependencies that we need pandas? As well? Yes, I did tell. So import pandas. As well. Let's now run again. Um, we are trying to look what is there inside this CSV. So basically with df.info we are going to print how many columns are there. And the detail of this data frame. Um, so it's taking some time because the CSV is really huge. I think there are around 28,000 um, training examples. Name df is not defined. Um, oh, sorry guys. As I said, our data frame is really huge. It is taking up some time to run. Um, till then, let me just check it out. How many images are there? So, as they have said, the training set contains 28,709 examples. Public text set for leaderboard. Uh, this is their other things, but this is basically a cause of content 28,709. Um, okay, so now we got the example. Uh, now we got the result of our data frame data columns there are three columns in our data so one is emotion one is pixels and third one is usage so basically emotion pixels and usage and emotion contains 35,800 okay not none in 64 emotion status in 64 as we saw there were um, 0 to 6 they were labeled on um, the Expressions were labeled 0 to 6, so it is an int 64. And then pixels is an object, and usage is also an object. Basically, I think that is a string containing 48 by 48 pixels. And I'm not sure about this usage, so let's go ahead and try to um, let us print some column values, some rows in this data frame to get a more um, idea about it. So, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print df dot head. Um, but first, what I want to know is this usage column. What is it? What does it contain? So I'm gonna say df dot usage dot 
value count it will basically give me what kind of values are stored so okay, I think I have not used let's see now it should basically give me what values are there and the count usage um, I haven't called function so I'm not sure what this is printing this is yes so this is what i was expecting so training and this many sample contain usage as training then 3589 as public test and then private test okay so we will take up this training and then for our test we will take this public test case assets okay so let us start to code okay let us see some values for some of the um some row values in this data frame so what we are going to do is we are going to say hat and we are going to print it and let's see what rows are there hmm. just taking some time okay so as you guys can see emotion it contains 0 1 2 3 4 values and these are 48 by 48 pixels and then usage is training for all this the usage is training okay so now we got a basic idea of it there is a emotion um, emotion column which contains all these emotions in integer formats and then uh, there is a pixels column it contains 48 by 48 pixels and there is this usage training and public test and private test so we are going to fetch this training ones for train our data and public test to test our data later on after we train it okay so now let me comment this out and um let us go ahead and define some of our values so basically guys um everything is done by kaggle team they have took the data they have took the faces of the persons with some expression they have cropped it and then they have labeled them that basically this is expression of angry sad or whatever so we have already got this data all we need to do is pre-process a little bit so that it is useful and we can fed it to keras so i am defining four lists and one is xtrain then train y x test and test y so this is as per convention that i have written train y x train and so what we are going to do is we are going to go over all the rows in our data frame and then we are going to extract that if it is training if in usage it is training one so i'm going to add it to my x train and y train and then if it is public test then i'm going to add it to our x test and y test okay so I will say for index comma row n df dot iter rows. Um, so now what I'm saying is uh, for row pixels that means in a row so this is going to give me the index and this is the row so in this row this column pixels because this pixel is a string that is separated by space it was mentioned in Kaggle data set also and just now we saw here also it is these all pixel values are separated by spaces so what we are saying is we are going to store them as an array we are going to split this pixels um, entire row based on this spaces in between and gonna store it in our list well okay okay so let's write it inside try block so if training in row usage so what i'll do is in our x train i'm going to append np dot array well, comma float 32 okay so what this means is if 
um, this column usage column value is training that means this is our training data set so in x train I'm gonna append these pixel values that I um, took in this list so this list I'm gonna append it as an NP array and its data type is float32 so we are converting all this data in float32 because later on we are going to normalize it we are going to um, take up the mean of all these values um, subtract the mean from all the values and then divide it by its standard deviation in that case we will need the values to be in float32 so that's why we are upfront converting them to float32 and then train by after this we are going to convert this list to NPRA as well because Keras is going to accept them in NPRA format uh, now I'm saying that um, if training is in row usage, x train dot append np array val for 32 and just append this motion in train of y. Else, if we get public test in row usage then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to append all those things to my test data so I'm gonna say y test and x test and test y okay and let's catch this error except the meaningful error error occurred at index index and row row okay now um, let's go ahead and print this x train train y x test and test one see what kind of data is there so these are all basically lists so this list will be having all the uh, pixels in an NPRA format in each ray and this will be having all the emotion values. So I'm going to go ahead and print um, sample data. What I'm going to do is so let's go train and let's print maybe two rows of this list similarly let's print all of these lists so, train y test test y Okay, now let us run our program. It's because the data is little huge, somewhere around 28,000 rows. So, hmm. till it's processing, let's go ahead and <clears throat> um. Now let us convert this all this list to NP array because Keras will accept only NP arrays as input and I'm going to convert it to float32. So you guys will see I already converted values to float32. Why I'm again converting it because it's like these arrays they were NP arrays of an array. So entirely this array I want to convert it to an NP array and then train y dot a train y comma float 32 similarly I'm going to do it for x test dot array x test comma 32 
and then test y p dot array comma float 32 so we are converting all these values to float 32 because later on we will be performing mean and standard deviation on this so we will normalize this data basically and then i want to define a bunch of um, variables um, basically um, okay before that uh, let me convert let me normalize this data so let me just say normalizing data between 0 and 1 um, let me comment this out okay and now what i'm gonna say is tray is equals np dot mean basically i am going to subtract all the values from the mean so that the average mean becomes zero of this entire data set around the axis zero and x train b dot standard zero and now we'll be dividing all these values by their standard uh, okay same way for our test data as well Okay, so now we have um, to mean and standard deviation. By that time, let's check whether these values got printed or not. Yes, they were printed. If you see, um, you can see in X train the sample data. We can see um, it's a list of NP arrays of this pixel. So you can see. This is one value its type is flow 32 then this is another row which is in array itself of all the pixels and if you say our y data set it is 0 0 that means it is depicting one of the emotions so these um, pixel values are for suppose 0 is sad so these pixel values are depicting sad as well as these 48 by 48 pixels are depicting sad value similarly our test data so all these pixel values depicting 0 that means sad and all these values are depicting 1 maybe if 1 stands for happy you can say happy okay now let's come back to our program now we have normalized the data now what we need to do is um, we need to do one more thing we need to reshape all our data so this x train data should be reshaped for now this is an array if for now you see this is just an array of all the um, what you say in each row it will be containing the pixel values but now we want to reshape it in a format that um, what do you say uh, keras is gonna accept so x train dot shape of zero that means how many rows are there into this training data and then we want it to be 48 by 48 pixels okay um, let me just define bunch of variables here instead of hard coding this values so I am gonna say some number of features equals depot number of 
label is equals seven batch size is equals um sixty four epox um let's take thirty width um height equals forty eight by forty eight um because this is was the pixel value of the images in our data set 48 by 48 so we are taking this width and height let's not hard code this value while reshaping our data let's take it as like this so this is going to reshape our x train into um this is the number of rows width and okay this is height with the height of our image and then one that means one feature will be having this width and height that means one image that we fed is going to have this width and this height um this is let's take okay so now let's go ahead and okay before that i need to do this for x test as well i need to reshape my x test data as well dot reshape x test dot shape of zero comma width height and one okay cool and now what we want to do is now we are going to start designing our cnn in keras so now our first layer will be first layer first let's select our model equals model is sequential sequential it's going to be a sequential model and then model dot add con two d so our layer is going to be con two d because our pictures are two d pictures so this number of features is basically going to depict uh, how many output filters this con layer is going to have okay and now kernel size is something like the filter size that we are going to superimpose on our images and activation function is going to be relu which is most often used and input shape is going to be train dot shape okay when i say one front that means um, here we have to give the shape of each of the only for one sample so what it says is because this first what say first argument is going to give us the number of the rows so we don't want that just we want to take um, we want our program to read the values from here width height and one okay that is input shape so we are um, removing the number of rows from its shape so that is the input shape of the layer for one feature so now model dot um, let's add this same layer again okay activation is ready and no need to give input shape now now what we are going Add us model. We are going to add a max pooling 2D layer and a pool size of 2 comma 2 comma strides 2 comma 2. So basically, in max pooling, what happens is um, we pick up the maximum value. 
from that pool and then we form our output using that so there is also average pooling layers where we take the average of all the values so i'm gonna use max pooling layer and then add dropout so we add this dropout uh, we randomly drop some of these things from the layer from the neurons from the layer so that um, our model doesn't overfit So now let me just early. I think now no need to mention everywhere. Yes. Yes, it's not required. Okay. The features kernel size activation is gonna be relu and Pool size 2 2, strides 2 2, and dropout 5. Okay, let's add one more. Convolutional layer. And this is also to add all these things to this third layer, even. by 3 and here what I want to do is that I want to double this number of zeros. I want to double the um, output filters so now max pooling to the pool size comma 2 strides now I'm gonna add now we are going to flatten our function and then we'll be adding dense layers now. Four times number of features. Uh, okay, so um, sorry. now let's add the number of filters as eight times of a number of features and then our activation function going to be ready and let us go ahead and add a drop out layer out um, this time I'll just point to and then one more dense layer and drop out two and then is going to be our final layer so number of labels so these number of labels are uh, which we use to depict our emotions which will be from 0 to 6 so these are our number of labels that is we defined it somewhere right number of labels 7 okay 0 to 6 and then here our activation function will be softmax and not relu because we are doing multi-class classification so we want to classify among these six seven emotions which we want to predict one of the emotions now let us go ahead and compile our model model.compile loss is going to be categorical cross entropy this loss this loss function is also used if we have multi class classification problems and it is optimizer will be Adam and matrix will be 
accuracy so matrix will be basically what our function is gonna generate while compiling now we will say model dot fit strain and y and then batch size will be our batch size and epochs will be our epochs i think we defined our epochs to be 30 you guys can train it for um, more number of epochs to get more accuracy um, to train it for around um, 30 epochs on my machine it took me almost around 3 hours on my mac machine so no magic air so as you can see it will take some time you can put it up for training and all can do other stuff while it trains and we will say shuffle this data ok um, now finally we will be saving our model so that we can later on use it as I said we are going to um, from webcam we are going to take real time images and perform facial expression detection on it so we'll save this data so that we can just directly load it so face expression recognition json okay so now with open fpr.json in write mode we are going to create this file And, and we are going to say json file dot write fpr json then we gonna save our all our weights so that later on we can just load this model and do real time detection so now we'll run this program so that our program starts training as i said for around an epoch of 30 it is going to take around three hours or so it took for my machine so it might take some time so let us put it up for training and okay input shape Positional argument follow keyword arguments. Ah, okay. This is line 69. So in Python, we cannot call position arguments after default arguments. See, we are using kernel size activation. Then we have to use name of this function as well. It is our input shape is equals. Okay, okay. I have done it. now it's same error position argument follow keyword argument it's in line 71 tool size strides is equals strides equals strides equals hmm. ok model is about to train hmm. okay till then model is training I have written one more file video tester.py so I'm not gonna write it I'm just going to briefly explain all you guys basically what I will be doing here is first we are going to do face detection uh, we are going to take live feed from our webcam and then we are going to do the face detection so which part of the image is a face for that we are going to use face uh, har cascades and i have loaded this har cascade frontal face de default.xml file i'll give this link of this file in the description and it's basically guys i'm not going to explain all these things how detection is happening here i have one more video on face recognition and detection where i explain this in greater detail it's the same code 
so basically what you are doing is you are taking the image converting it to gray image and then you are passing it to our R cascade and then you will be getting the faces detected in it then what you are going to do is you are going to crop from that gray image whatever is the part of the image uh, whatever is the part of the face and then we are going to resize to 48 by 48 since our, all our training data is in 48 by 48 pixels and then we are going to convert this image to pixels and then we are going to add one more dimensions um, and then basically we are going to normalize this and we are going to pass it to our model to predict and then whatever this model is actually gonna predict it in probabilities so we are going to find which ones is maximum in probability and then we have created a tuple of emotions and then we say whatever max index we get here that is our predicted emotion and we gonna finally put it on our screen on this test image is the predicted emotion and in this font okay so this is pretty straightforward this program video tester.py um, okay we have got some error in our emotion detection program Con2D can accept only two position argument filter kernel size but you pass the following position argument 6433 relu and the line is 65 hmm. uh, okay um, what is the error here drop all features relu and uh, size drop all point five Here list con 2d can accept only two position arguments filter and then it says And guys I think we have missed one more thing over here that our um, Y array basically have to be in the format of um, because we are using categorical cross entropy function so we will need to change our train y and test y accordingly so train y mp utils dot to categorical train y and num classes are gonna be number of labels I'll explain you guys what I'm doing here basically uh, categorical and this is going to be our test y this is going to be our test y okay so I'll show you guys two categorical function to get a as you can see over here two categorical the 
basically guys we are having um seven integers right zero one two three four five six for train y what it will do is it will convert it into matrix format how it is suitable for the cross categorical cross and cut functions so it will be something like zero zero one if it is two zero 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 one zero 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 if it is three zero zero one zero 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 likewise i'll show you guys an example of two categorical function not finding it here uh, and pay utils okay yes two categorical okay guys so here example we can see um, basically this array 0 2 1 2 0 is going to be converted into so this is 0 so first one is 1 then here the value is 2 so the second one is 1 that way next it is 1 so it is going to be 0 1 0 in its matrix format it is going to transform this array into this so our array is um, numbers from 0 to 6 depicting emotion they will be converted into this matrix format so that is what two categorical does and now finally um, okay there is one more error the same thing line 46 not here line 76 let me check line 76 mm -hmm. I have given motivation okay Activation is equals okay in school. Let's start. Let's start. We have some error. Dense is not defined. Okay, there is some spelling mistake. On which line? Ninetieth. This is dense. Dense. Okay. Now training is gonna start yes it has started and also guys there is one more useful command model dot summary so you can print the summary of the model how many layers are there how many input parameters output parameters are there okay using model dot summary so after adding all your layers here you can add something like model model dot summary like this okay now training has started it is going to take some time to train our model okay guys so the program is trained and as we can see the accuracy is finally 66 percent at the end of 30 epochs so i would recommend that you train this model for some more epochs something like 50 or 100 to increase its accuracy but for now lack of time i'm going to only um, train it for 30 epochs and it took me around three hours on my macbook air so it will take some time guys and now let's just run our tester file to check this is in real time okay yes as you guys can see Okay, so guys, as you can see, it's still not very accurate. If we train it for some more time, it will be fun, but that's all for now. And please like and subscribe this video if you want to see more such videos from me. Check our video tester program in real action. So let's start it yes my webcam started and as you can as you guys all can see
so it is accurately detecting happy and surprise features but i think it is fumbling between fear and surprise i think if we train it for some more epochs then its accuracy might increase but this is also pretty good 66 percent accuracy okay guys so that's all for this video and if you like this video please subscribe and like and comment below to receive more such updates from me